Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at another Phoebus and it's not just any Phoebus. It's a ladies watch, which is a first for the channel. One thing to mention here, this is a ladies diver. So for me, all of this is new. I've never reviewed a ladies watch before, let alone a diver. So I hope I provide a relevant angle on all the strengths and the weaknesses that I think this thing has. So this is Phoebus's second attempt at a ladies watch, so to speak, because before this, there was another version, which was quartz, which compared to this, this is automatic. It's an interesting approach for a lady's watch to go for a diver because in my opinion, there are a lot of elements that need to be done in a certain way for this to appeal to the female audience. But we get into those things as we get along. Just a bit of a disclaimer, this watch was sent in to me by Phoebus for free for the purpose of the review and I don't need to send it back. Other than that, they didn't have any input in the content of this review. So bear that in mind as the video goes along. Also, Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future videos or any future reviews. Now let's get into it. There are plenty of brands out there that do ladies watches, but none of them offer these sort of specs at this price. And from my research, I couldn't find any micro brands that do this, especially ladies divers. So if you know of any, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I've seen reviews about this on other people's channels and they claim it's a unisex watch. I mean, if you look at the design, I really don't think this is a unisex watch, but if you look at the size and the thickness, you might have a case there. Let's go through some dimensions and see what I'm talking about. We have a case diameter of 38 millimeters. We have a lug to lug of 44 millimeters with female end links. We have 18 millimeter lug width and a thickness of 12.9 millimeters. And if you add that dome sapphire crystal to that, you have a thickness of 14.1 millimeters. And let's not forget the weight, which is 124 grams sized up for my wife's wrist, which in this case is 5.9 inches. Let's take a step back here and have a small analysis. Let's start with the weight, 124 grams. It might not sound a lot, but my wife had this on a full day and she did mention it to me a couple of times that this is a bit heavy. That being said, it was warm outside and her wrist expanded throughout the day and she was just more aware of it, so to speak. So that's also a factor. The second thing I want to mention here is the thickness. 12.9 millimeters for a lady's watch is a bit high. I'm also aware of the fact that this is a 200 meter rated water resistance diver and it has to have that certain thickness to kind of cope with that but i feel that in this case the watch looks a bit too big and a bit too top heavy especially with that tapering bracelet let's move on to the case fully brushed with a vertical pattern on the side and horizontal on the top of the lugs one thing they nailed here and i'm a big fan of this is matching the brushing pattern on the bracelet with the pattern on the lugs it just has that perfect continuity and it doesn't break the overall flow of the visual effect. I wish more brands would do this with their watches, but then again, it is what it is. Crown guards at the three house the signed screw down crown, which is polished versus the rest of the watch. That's a small detail that adds to the whole visual effect and makes the crown stand out in a very subtle and pleasant to look at way. Also, a quick reminder that between the screw down crown and the screw down case back, we have a stated water resistance of 200 meters. Let's talk about the bezel. We have 120 clicks and it's all 316 stainless steel. No backplate, very easy to turn with a loom dot at the 12. The numbers have all this polished finish, which makes them stand out over the brushed background, so to speak, which again, it's a small detail that adds to the whole visual effect that I was mentioning before. The grip on the bezel has this saw-like pattern, which allows you to get proper grip anytime and also use your nails to turn it so it points 
to that for the right direction. Overall, the case is done very, very well and those small little details when put together really make a big difference. So there is nothing in your face, but just enough there to notice. Let's move on. The dial is covered by a slightly domed piece of sapphire crystal with three layers of anti-reflective coating underneath. And I do have to admit, I'm not sure if it's the crystal or everything else on the dial, but everything really comes to life when the light hits it. The variant that we have here is called Tahitian Black, and apart from this one, all the other dial variants are a bit more vibrant and a bit more colorful. Not that this one isn't, it just isn't as much. They're all mother of pearls, so expect the same sort of shift in colors and the same kind of light play when this is out in the sun. Diamond like applied in the seas with a date window at the six, and this has a date frame with the same finish as the indices to give it the same kind of pop in the daylight. One thing that I really like is the minimum writing on the dial. Apart from the automatic in red and 200 meters under it at the six, there is nothing else that's there just for the sake of being there. Just not enough dial surface to fill it up with nonsense. The sort of style hands really fit in the whole design and complement the finishing on all the other shapes nicely. The dial is actually really well made and it has this delicate vibe around it. And to be honest, I wouldn't have any sort of negative comments here just because there aren't any. Great execution and a very tastefully done design that doesn't look over the top. The loom. Something that Phoebus does very well is the loom. And I don't think I've ever seen or heard anybody that complain about the loom on any of their models. BGW9 on the hands and indices, and it does shine pretty bright. It's nothing that's gonna break any records, but you can tell that this is well done and you'll never feel like you'll need any more. My wife certainly, certainly didn't complain about that. She never said, oh, there's not enough loom. I'll normally move on to the movement, but I want to take a moment and talk about the case back here. Engraved on the back, we have this lady diver re-emphasizing the fact that this watch is for a lady. And in case you forget, it's also mentioned on the spec sheet on the back. Don't really have any comments here, but what I want to say is that the case back itself stands a little taller than I would have wanted. And it adds to the overall mentioned thickness. Powering this, we have the super popular Seiko NH35. As usual, I'll put the spec list on the screen. A very welcome addition at the price, and it usually sits in the same range for all the other micro brands. Phoebus use this quite often in their models and in this category, and you don't need me to tell you how good the NH35 is. This one is running at a minus seven seconds per day, which is within the stated tolerances. It's not the best, but Again, you get what you pay for. In true channel fashion, the last thing that we're gonna cover here is the bracelet. Phoebus are usually very good when it comes to bracelets. This one has 18 millimeter lugs with quick release spring bars and keep this in mind. We'll talk about it later. Three link oyster style, polished everywhere with screw pins to adjust and this was just a, a dream to size. We also have female end links that conform to the wrist quite nicely, as it should. We have a butterfly clasp with double pushes to release with three holes of micro adjust. We also have a mill clasp with the octopus logo engraved. Now, as much as I really think that the that logo shouldn't be on the clasp, this is a pretty cool logo, so I'll just go over that. It's a very nice, comfortable bracelet, and you would think that the addition of the quick release spring bars would elevate the experience and would make this a bit more flexible when it comes to swapping straps. But first of all, this thing looks good the way it is, and the bracelet is actually quite good, but, uh, but as much as I really like that feature, this is quite difficult to operate and to have access to the quick release function. Because the bars are angled towards the case, you really can't get a proper grip in order to operate it properly. Maybe my nails aren't long enough or I just don't know how to do that properly. Right, so what do we think? I really appreciate the fact that Phoebus decided to open the market to our lady watch nerds out there. And I think that more micro brands should follow this path. People really like options and I would really like to see what their take is on the concept. So kudos to Phoebus for doing that. In regards to the watch itself, almost 13 millimeter thickness is 
on the thicker side for any watch, so not just for a 38 millimeter case diameter. So I think that could be revisited in a future mo model. I can't really argue with design pattern as I think they stayed true to the Phoebus design language and they apply that to what it seems to be a very good looking diver. Now, that was it for me guys. If you made it this far, thank you very, very much for watching the video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the watch and what you think about Phoebus as a brand. Brand, I really want to hear it. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any future content. Thank you very, very much again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.